So you just bought and installed your new Holly EFI system. Bitch, I'm a big Open up the software, getting ready to get started, and you're completely overwhelmed by the amount of adjustability that there is. In this video, it doesn't matter if you have a Sniper, Terminator X, or HP Dominator. I'm gonna walk you through like the very basics and kind of where to get started. Hopefully this will give you a nice starting point so you at least know what the basics are and, and how to find what it is that you're after. This is a base file that was created by the wizard. Ironically, this car actually paid a thousand dollars for this tune. And, and again, all it is is a, is a wizard tune. So make sure that that doesn't happen to you. Step number one. But assuming that you've done the same, you have a file that's open, the first place that I would recommend starting would be right here in the system ICF. So once you're in the system ICF, the ECU configuration is going to be the, the first thing that you need to start with. Just choose which ECU you have. Next we have engine parameters. The engine displacement here is probably one of the bigger ones. And I've done a complete video on all of these different load sensing types. So if you're too lazy to watch that, just use VE based. And then here for fuel type, we can use gasoline or E85 on this particular ECU. This doesn't change the fueling at all. All that this does is change the scales that you're looking at. I use gasoline for everything. The only time I change off of gasoline is on methanol, which you can only do on the HPs and the dominators. Next we have our injection type. Most instances, unless it's a sniper, is going to be multi-port. All the snipers will be TBI. And our actual system pressure, this one's important. This is what your actual fuel pressure is. So if you have a fuel pressure sensor or a fuel pressure gauge, uh, whatever number you see there is what you're going to enter here. And probably the next biggest, most important thing is going to be choosing your fuel injectors. You just click on this drop down list. You can see there's a thousand variables. If your injectors are not on this list, you just simply go to custom. Then you would enter the flow rate for your injector at what fuel pressure. So if you have 80 pound injectors and they flow 80 pounds at 43 PSI is what all of the data is for, then you would use 43 right here. 43 and 58 seem to be the two common ones, but more often than not, they're generally rated at 43. When you choose a drop down, all of this stuff is filled out for you. And again, if you go to custom, you will be responsible for entering your injector dead times here, which there's a big misconception with this that you have to tune this value. You don't. The injector manufacturer will give you this information. This is also done off of battery voltage. So if we look down here, we're at, you know, between 11 and 14 is what most 12 volt systems are going to run. Even though that table looks a little intimidating because there's a whole lot of values, really you're just kind of only operating in this range here. But once you have your, your system pressure, your flow rate, and your injector dead times, uh, you should be pretty much good to go on that. The next thing you want to go to is your ignition parameters. Uh, again, there's a big drop down, and whichever ignition system you're using, uh, you need to choose that here. Generally speaking, if you get this wrong, the car will not start. Again, there isn't much tuning here. This is just gonna be a drop down for what you're using. And then your firing order here is obviously very important, which is usually populated based off of what you're using here. Uh, but just double check and make sure that the firing order is correct. And nobody's really using knock sensors on these things, so you can kinda almost ignore that. Now, once you get your car up and running, especially if you are using uh, something with adjustable ignition you're going to have to sync the ignition timing and to do that you'll go here to this uh, drop down right here and click on enable static timing check uh, that's where you're going to use your timing light and sync the ecu with the distributor another thing in this menu that you'll have to do is this tps auto set so just be aware of where these two things are next while we're in system parameters this close loop and learn the default settings as you can see here are 50 percent on both uh, that's a hundred percent correction. If you are even half of that far off on the fueling, then you should probably stop and figure out why everything is so wrong. I always recommend that you take these numbers and chop them down to significantly, uh, whether you want to make that 10%, 20%, you know, the choice is up to you. But basically with these two things at a hundred percent, if and when your oxygen sensor dies on you, the car is not going to run. It's going to be trying to add 100% additional fuel. So, uh, you know, like I said, 10, 20%, somewhere in there is pretty reasonable. Between the two, it's going to give you 20 to 40% correction. And again, if you're that far off, there's some other problems that you should probably start addressing. 
Next thing that you're probably going to want to go to after you go through the system ICF is going to be your sensors. The map sensor right here is one of the most important sensors on the car. You have to get this one correct. There's a thousand drop down options and then there's also a custom map right here. So you can put whatever sensor you want in there. You just need the calibration data from the manufacturer. Another tip, if you're using internal one bar or Holly one bar or any of these one bar drop downs, it won't allow you to do anything with the boost control. So make sure that you have uh, like a two or a three bar selected or whatever sensor you're using that isn't a one bar. Then also make sure that you get the tool coolant temp sensor and the manifold air temperature sensors correct. Uh, those are used for a lot of different things in the fueling calculation, so you need to get these correct. Again, you have drop downs and then the option for custom. Uh, the GM sensors are without a doubt the most common. If you're running oil pressure or fuel pressure sensors, you can set those up here as well. Those are not required to make the engine run and they're not used for any of the fuel calculations. So you can kind of skip those and come back to them if you need to. Next thing you're probably going to want to do is set up your idle speed. You can't really start tuning your fuel or any of that until the car idles. Uh, this is your idle spark. So if you have 20 degrees in your ignition table and you see that the timing's jumping all around and you can't figure out why, this is the reason. So if you don't want this on, obviously toggle it off. Uh, otherwise you can play with these numbers to adjust how fast, how slow, how much adjustment there is. Now if you want to walk through on what all of these settings and tables do and how to configure all of this stuff, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, you can go to the website too, it's tunethetrilogy.com. We will have like a full tutorial walkthrough A to Z on all of the different systems. Uh, pretty excited about that, so check that out if you're looking for a more in-depth description on all of this stuff. The next thing you need to do is make sure you have the correct type of idle control valve selected. Uh, generally, the GMLS and the Ford are the two common ones that I see. Uh, Drive-by wire is a little bit of a different animal. And then you have the slow, medium, fast. Uh, the custom is down there if you want to get into setting up your own PID values. Probably not what you're after if you're watching this video. Here's all of our other idle control stuff, but the big one that you need to do is you need to choose your idle speed. You need to be realistic with yourself on this as well too. Uh, if you have a stage 612 cam in it, it's probably not going to idle at 312 RPM. So put a reasonable value here. It's much easier to get the car running with the idle higher and then progressively bring it down and figure out where it starts getting unhappy. And then our ISC parked here. This is basically the amount of airflow that the idle control valve is going to allow while the engine is cranking. So it's the, kind of the, think of it as the equivalent of holding your foot on the throttle. So this is a pretty important table here. Next you have your spark plug here is your ignition. Again, this is something somebody paid a thousand dollars for. The simple and 2D are the two types that you have. You just paid a whole bunch of money for an advanced engine management system. Use 2D and this will give you access to the whole table here. If you want to view it graphically, you can go to base timing graph. The cranking stuff usually doesn't, almost anything will work here. If you want to adjust the rev limiter, it's right here. Uh, this is the knock control stuff. Uh, again, nobody uses this. It's not really set up in a very user friendly way, in my opinion. And these two here are your timing offsets off of coolant temperature and air temperature. You can see that the defaults are scaled really weird. I don't necessarily recall a car ever running at a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. So just make sure, if nothing else, that you don't have any stupid values here. I've seen files where guys will have, you know, negative 60 degrees in this table and wonder why the car wants to shut off on them all of a sudden. So just be aware of that. This is your input and output tab. Pretty self-explanatory as far as what it is. Setting it up can be a little tricky, so that's a video for a different day. So again, just be aware of where that is. Inputs are if you have, say, a sensor that you want the ECU to read and then an output is say you have something that you want the ECU to turn on like a, a radiator fan would be an output and a dome pressure sensor would be an input. Automatic transmission is under this tab here. Again this is a little complex and it's a different video for a different day but that's where that is if you need that. And if say if you wanted to add boost control you go toolbox, add individual configuration, boost, default boost, now you have a boost control icon, uh, so you have all your different setup as far as that goes as well. Again, getting distracted here. Uh, we're just going for the, the basics. 
I actually really like that Holly put the fuel ICF all the way over to the left because it's the one where you spend your most time. So it's just easier kind of knowing it's always over here. So if we click on that, uh, this is our base fuel table. And you can see that uh, this is not real happy with the map sensor selection that we have. Uh, when you have these white cells like this, that means that you're out of fuel injector. Uh, so let's change that real quick. Like I was saying earlier, since we have the turbo ICF added, uh, we no longer have the option for a one bar sensor. So if you wanna remove an ICF, go to toolbox, remove individual configuration. In this case, we'll do boost. We'll go back to our sensors, map, and internal one bar is what this thing was set up for. And now you can see it looks a little, a little bit better. So just like the ignition map, if you want to view it graphically, you just click on fuel graph. You can look at it like that. Uh, this is the big one right here, the learn table. You can see that, again, this $1,000 tune has 20% fuel correction going on up here. Uh, it's pretty reasonable here in the middle, and then uh, it's a little negative down here. But if you are under the assumption that this system is self-tuning and you can simply populate this learn table and then I'll just apply it to the fuel table and that's going to be everything that you need to do. I apologize, that's not really the way that this stuff works. If it was that easy, then myself and none of the other million people that do this for a living would have jobs. This can be a very useful tool and very beneficial when used correctly, but there's far more to tuning than just simply pushing transfer learn to base and, and that's it. So next we have our target air fuel ratio table. Again, this thousand dollar tune just has three values. So I would suggest you go to 2D table. The other thing to keep in mind here is that the lower the number, the richer the air fuel ratio is, the higher the number is, the leaner it is. I see probably one out of 10 cars that seems to come in with those numbers backwards. So they're targeting 11.0, idle and cruising, and then they're targeting 16.5 full throttle. So uh, make sure that you have the correct orientation of the numbers in this table, unless you wanna buy a motor. Next we have our acceleration enrichment. Uh, this works in conjunction with the main fuel table. You really need to have the main fuel table tuned properly first, and then you can go and tune the acceleration enrichment. Um, I have done another video on acceleration enrichment. I'll give you a better walkthrough on that. Uh, just keep in mind that with the learn table, when acceleration enrichment is active, the fuel table, the learn table is not. So when you have rapid throttle changes and things of that nature, uh, the learn isn't gonna work. It's not gonna pick it up in the table and you really need to tune all of that stuff manually. Once that is done, then you can do the acceleration enrichment. And then next we have temperature enrichment. Uh, this is your warm up. As you can see, we have coolant temperature down here, and then this is the amount of fuel that's gonna be added. Uh, when you see this percent, that means that 100% is the equivalent of zero. So in this case, we would be adding 5% fuel, we'd be adding 50% fuel here. And then we have air fuel ratio offset. So this is gonna change our target air fuel ratio based off of coolant temperature. Uh, you can see in this file here, once we get to 120, it's just gonna be using the target air fuel ratio table. It's no longer gonna be using this one. I know we have an air temp enrichment that, this is uh, more for like air density. As the air is denser, you need more fuel. And as it's less dense, uh, you don't need quite as much. Uh, so this table isn't nearly as impactful as the coolant based tables. And then we have our startup enrichment. Uh, so these are all labeled pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we have cranking fuel. This is how much fuel well you have the actual key is active. Uh, after start hold off, you don't have to mess with too much. And then the after start enrichment. Uh, this is basically how much fuel after you exit the cranking fuel, you're gonna come into this. And then this is gonna stay active for this amount of time uh, based off of coolant temperature. So that's how all of that stuff works. All right, next, if you want to tune your car, you need to know how to data log. And to start and stop the data logs, you actually click on this clipboard looking icon. And once you want to view the data log after you save it, you go here to data log, open data log. Uh, it will bring up the second kind of 
tab, and now you have all of your data log information. You can zoom in and zoom out using all of these things up here. I generally will just uh, zoom in uh, dragging the mouse like this. And wherever you click on the graph, we'll update all of this information over here. If you click on this E, it will give you all of your different views that you can edit. And then from here, you just drag and drop. If you don't want something, you can bring it over this way. And if you do want it, you can bring it over that way. Click OK. It's going to ask you if you want to save it. I almost always hit yes. And then if you want to click on the different views, you can do it this way. Now you can rescale just by clicking on whichever item it is. You can see here we have a 9,000 RPM scale, which brings our graph to about here. So if we change this to 7,000, you can see it brings it up here. Another one I, with TPS, you see guys will have 100, and then it gets right up to the top of the thing, and it's really hard to see. So I'll usually just go a little bit further. That way you can actually see where your line is. Uh, another thing you can do here is you can just drag this to the right. It's going to give you a whole lot more information there. I tend just to look at it like this more often than not. And if you want to get a little bit more fancy with it, uh, there is a compare feature here. Uh, you can open different panes. You see here that we got like split screen. Um, I Again, I, I prefer just to keep everything on one for the most part. Two more things you can do with the data log. We'll actually go back to the tuning software. And you see, if we go into here to the fuel map, you can see we have this yellow ball. So if we bring this back down here, oops, you can see our, our ball moves over here. So that's basically showing you where you're at in the data log on the fuel table. That's really helpful. If you go to data log, activate overlay. Uh, you can see this green line that's actually giving us a, a visual representation of all of the cells that we drove through during that data log. Uh, so you can see here, it looks like we went full throttle right here, uh, did a pull, and then when we let off the throttle, it came down this way. And then uh, just to turn that off, uh, just go to remove overlay. That's a very helpful tool. And I guess last but not least, I tend not to use this, but if you click on this, it'll bring up these gauges and you can configure these however you like. I find it annoying to use because when you click on something, it just minimizes itself and then you got to go and find it. So whenever I'm tuning, I tend to just keep whatever it is that I'm after right here. I find this much easier to use because I'm, again, I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm generally making tons of changes in all these different tables. So each time I click on something, and then this gauge panel minimizes itself. It's just not for me. Anyways, hopefully that was a quick intro to what's what and what's where within the system. I have a playlist on my channel that's just called Holly EFI Tutorials. If you click on that, there's all kinds of walkthroughs on a lot of the different things in here. That's gonna do it for this video. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.